I love using the scriptures that the Christians claim as their own. I love to use those scriptures against them. And today will be no different. And for those of you who've been watching the news, you know by now that a saying that I used to say a long, long time ago, mankind is 24, no, 48 hours short of total and complete depravity. Well, total and complete depravity is here yet again just like in the 1930s and 40s. And just as Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini were Catholics, so has uh, Vladimir Putin cloaked himself with the Russian Orthodox Church. Let's see here. Orth Russian Orthodox Church considers a ban on blessing weapons of mass destruction. That was back in 2019. Let's read this and you'll see how insane the heads of the churches are. Early one evening in May 2018, days before the annual parade celebrating the Soviet victory in World War II, a convoy of military trucks carrying long-range nuclear weapons trundled to a halt on the Russian capital's ring road. As police officers stood guard, two Russian Orthodox priests wearing cassocks and holding Bibles climbed out of the vehicle and began sprinkling holy water on the stationary Topol and Yars intercontinental ballistic missiles. <clears throat> Such relations between Russia and the West plummeted after Russian uh, Kremlin's seizure of Crimea in 2014, and such scenes have become common here. Priests have sanctified S-400 surface-to-air missiles, nuclear submarines, tanks, and fighter jets. Several years ago, a priest in Russia's Far East explained that weapons, including nuclear missiles, were perceived as a means of protection and salvation. Insanity. But the practice could soon be a thing of the past. Last month, a Russian Orthodox Church committee in ecclesiastical law recommended that clergy concentrated on blessing soldiers rather than weapons. Well, as they say here in the United States, a gun can't do anything without the man behind it. So what difference does it make? makes no difference. One can talk about the blessing of a warrior military duty in defense of the fatherland, said uh, Sava Tutunov, a bishop of the Moscow Patriarchate. So you see what the church has done. Let's listen to what James had to say about this. From where come wars and fighting with you? Don't they come from your lust? That war in your body? You lust and you have not. You kill and you desire to have and you cannot obtain. Just like Nazi Germany, in the end, they lost. And in the end of this one, Russia will lose too.
You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, badly, that you may consume, spend freely upon your lusts. Wasn't the question that I have to Vladimir Putin, isn't your ginormous castle that you have, that palatial estate you have, enough? It's never enough. A Volkswagen in every drive, I mean a car in every driveway and a chicken in every pot and an iPhone or an Android in every hand apparently is not enough. With full bellies, with full bellies, everywhere around the world, the vast majority of people now, more than ever have been, have full bellies. Even in India, more than has ever been. The past year or so that we had India and Pakistan um, threatening to shoot nukes at each other. China is in the best financial situation it has been since its beginning. And now it wants to threaten war with Taiwan. And if they would look carefully at what's going on in Ukraine, they would see that um, it might not be as easy as one might think. Let's have a look. That's not the one that I wanted to look at. I wanted to see. Where did this go? There was a... I had it right in front of me. Well, I have this where soldiers, they are looting, Russian soldiers are looting Ukraine. Okay. All right. I completely lost this other one. It was very, very important, too. Uh, search. Let's see here. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Um, I posted it on Facebook. I don't really want everybody to see my social media account, but I really don't care at this point. Um, where is this? Why can I find... Alright. Alright, here it is. So, what does this say in Russian? Let's translate it. The enemy wanted to capture us in two days, but it turns out that in two, two days it turned into a biomass. And as you can see here, there is a man that was burned alive and his ribs were sticking out. All right? Now, if... Right here. There it is. A Russian soldier burned alive with his ribs. There's his ribs. Now, YouTube may strike me. If they keep striking me, then I will no longer uh, post videos on YouTube. I'll just keep on posting on BitChute, okay? But it's necessary for you to see this. You see what happens? See, see, James was right. This is what happens after you have a full belly. There's a car in every drive. There's a, yeah, there's 
not a Volkswagen in every driveway, but a car in every driveway, and a chicken in every pot. This is what happens. It's never enough. You saw the looting. It's never enough. And what happens? That's what happens. There was at least two, is it IL-76s or LI-76 transport planes that can haul 150 paratroopers apiece shot out of the sky by the Ukrainians. Now, I'm not defending the Ukrainians. Please understand this. They're the same people. This is brother against brother. The same religion, folks. Orthodox Christianity. What do you think? What do you think was um, World War II was all about? It was brother against brother, same religion. Catholic versus Catholic. Now I want to go to um, as if, as if Russia thought that they had Ukraine in the bag and were ready to head on over to Israel. This article was posted the day before yesterday. Russia denounces Israel's sovereignty over Golan Heights. Russia doesn't recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights that are part of Syria, says Russia Dmitry Polyansky. You see what's going on here, folks. Russia, or I should say Vladimir Putin, but Russia, and the demons that he worships, um, is angry that he lost, that Russia lost their sphere of influence over Eastern Europe, and he's now trying to collect it back. And while he's at it, He's collecting, you know, he has already uh, defeated Belarus without firing a shot. And now he's going after Ukraine. And there are reports that, not yet, but Finland and Sweden, Finland and Sweden are taking second looks at joining NATO. Not that it's going to help them. It's not going to help them. What I'm talking about with every action, there is a reaction. You all know that saying. And sometimes the reaction is worse than the action. At the UN Council meeting on Wednesday, where Israel apartheid was the focus rather than urgent global issues, foolish people at the UN, Russia's envoy said Moscow considers the Golan Heights to be a part of Syria. Russia doesn't un uh, recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights as a part of Syria. Deputy Ed, uh, we just saw that. So it was captured during the Six-Day War 1967 when the Jewish state was threatened with annihilation by surrounding Arab countries and won a stunning victory. And didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you in one of the previous videos that many of the previous videos that the Ezekiel 38-39 war is going to take place in the Golan Heights. I'll show you how I know it in a few minutes. And of course they formally annexed the Golan in 1981 and former President Trump officially recognized the Golan as Israeli territory during his tenure. And of course, you see, that irked Putin very much. 
Now, if those of you who are following this Russia-Ukraine war, you will notice that <clears throat> even now, back then up until now, back before, just before the war started until even now, Putin is demanding concessions that are impossible for Ukraine to give. Just making impossible demands. If he turns his head toward Israel, he will also make the same impossible demands, the same demands that Barack Hussein Obama made, that Israel needs to go back to the 67 borders. That's impossible. Can't be done. And it will not be done. He's trying to gather the sphere of influence. Trying to gather the greatness, the old greatness of the old Russian Empire. Fornicating, I should say, the Orthodox Church fornicating with the governments of this world. Just like the Catholic Church did. We are concerned over Tel Aviv's announced... Tel Aviv? The capitals in Jerusalem, they don't recognize that either. Announced plans for expanding settlement activity in the occupied fools. Golan Heights were directly which directly contradicts the provisions of the nineteen forty nine Geneva Convention, the Russian mission tweeted. Russia does not recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights that are part of Syria. And so, let's go ahead then and work our way towards Ezekiel 38 then. And the word, the speech of Jehovah, not the Lord. There's no such thing as the Lord. Came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, of the land of Magog. Rosh. Orus. Captain of Meshach and Tubal. And prophesy against him. Those, there are those who say that Meshach is Moscow and I don't, I don't disagree with them. And Tubal is Tbilisi. There's another, uh, it, it can be considered Tbilisi, but there's also another place in Russia that sounds like it. I don't, I don't remember what it was. And prophesy and say unto him, Say, Jehovah El or <coughs> Jehovah Adonai says, Gog. Doesn't say, I'm against you, O Gog. It says, Gog. Rosh, prince of Meshach and Tubal. He will return and put hooks in your jaws and bring you forth. Your army, your Seuss, that can mean horses and warbirds. And horsemen. Okay. Stretched out to a vehicle. I have stretched out to a vehicle. Okay. Chariots can be tanks, and in fact, um, the word uh, Merkava, see if I can find it right here. Is it chariots right here? Well, when I find chariots, I'll pull it up, and it's Merkava. And the Israeli tank is called a Merkava, okay? 
all sorts of armor, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling cherub, carob, a sidearm, and Persia, Cush, and Libya, or Put, shield and helmet, and Gomer, and as I told all of you, Inside of a month ago, Gomer is the entire area of Europe. Gomer covers Riffith, the father of the Celts, Ashkenaz, the Germans, and uh, Togarma of the extreme of the north extreme parts and I showed you a map that pointed directly to Russia Norway Sweden Finland and many people be you prepared all your company that are assembled unto you and you will be a guard you, you know the words, you will be in control, in command of them. After many days from this prophecy, you will be visited. It will be the day of your visitation. Just like Jerusalem's day of their visitation was 70, the year 70 on the Roman calendar, this will be the day of visitation on all of the aforementioned includes all of Europe. How could this, how could they all suddenly join together in a war against Israel? How could this happen? I will show you how it can happen. It is called brainwashing. Now, you don't, don't forget, folks. Do not forget that Germany and Russia, the USSR and Germany, Nazi Germany, were allied together in World War II until an event happened. Then they were mortal enemies, just like that. The same thing had happened the other way around. They could all be enemies right now. And then when an event takes place, because they are all brainwashed, they will suddenly become allies. Don't think it can happen? You didn't think that another world war could happen in our day, did you? Some of you didn't. Not only am I telling you that it can happen, I'm telling you it will happen. These things always happen after when bellies become full and people want more. Just like in the 1920s, the roaring 20s led to the 30s. Full bellies always leads to war and destruction. Now, where was I going? Oh, right here. Cyril the Catholic, his 15th catechetical lecture. You can see the link up here. If I can remember, I'll post it. But you see right here it is Cyril's 15th catechetical lecture. And oh, how deceitful, how he, how his doctrine has deceived the whole world. And he's talking about his version of, as he says, the true Christ versus the Antichrist. In verse 11, but as when formerly he was to take man's nature and as he says, God, 
the idol of the sons of Japheth, was expected to be born of a virgin. The devil created prejudice against this by craftily preparing among idol-worshipping fables of false gods, begetting and begotten of women that falsehood should have come first. Well, yeah, because you see, this Jesus or Jesus was born 834 BCE on December the 25th, not 70, not the Roman year 70. He doesn't even, he didn't even, either, either he knew and was trying to deceive the public or he didn't know at all. As supposed, might have disbelieved, so now, since the true Christ, as he says, is to come a second time, the adversary taken occasion by the expectation of the simple. Watch this. Expectation of the simple, huh? Do you bother? Do, folks, do you bother to cross-check these people? Do you bother to examine these people to see if they have the truth or not? Look, let me show you something. By the expectation of the simple. Watch this. Um, Think. I think that's going to pull it up. Oh, hold on. Please be patient with me. I have to... Um... No. All right. Uh, babes. find it. I might have to Google it. Very important, folks. Ah, yes. Here it is, folks. Now, his name is not Jesus. I've shown you that many, many times. I'll show it to you again. It's not Eesous. Nope. It is Yehoshua. That's his name. His name never was Greek, is not Greek today, and never will be. And it won't be English either. You do not change the truth to suit you. The truth stays the same. It does not change. It does not compromise for your comfort. You need to think about this. It does not compromise for the sake of your anti-Semitism. How about that? Now, here is what he says. Verse 25. And Yehoshua answered and said, I thank thee, thank you, Ab, Master of heaven and earth, because you have hid these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them unto babes, simple-minded or immature people. You see that? That's how you check these people. That's how you find out if they're telling the truth or not. See how easy that was? See how simple that was? Do you see it? And in
infant, a simple-minded or immature person. Now, let's see what Cyril says here. Taking the adversary, taking occasion by the expectation of the simple, especially of them of the circumcision. Oh, especially the Jew. No, it was not given unto him. It was not. Because he considered himself wise. And what did Yehoshua say? He said, that you hid, you concealed these things from the wise, from the skilled and prudent, and has revealed them unto the simple-minded, like me. Backwoods hillbilly. Because it seemed good in your sight. So by default, by default then, Cyril's version of events is wrong. And if you listen to him, and if you listen to his version of, as they say, the Antichrist, you're going to get it wrong. But taking occasion by the expectation of the simple, and especially of them of the circumcision, to bring in a certain man who is a magician. So, apparently, simpletons like me and the circumcised, the Jew, are expecting a great miracle worker to save Israel. When? And he calls, he calls what the, what the Moshiach is going to do sorceries. An enchantment of beguiling craftiness, who shall seize for himself the power of the Roman Empire, and shall falsely style himself as Christ. So we just read that the wise and the skilled don't have it, their version of events is false. That means that. Everything that, uh, that this whole narrative right here that Cyril is describing, the same narrative that all Christianity from Russian Orthodox to Ukrainian Orthodox to Egyptian Orthodox to the Catholics to all of the Protestants have chosen that false narrative. Deceiving the Jews who are looking for the anointed. And I have showed you so many times in so many ways that when the time of the Gentiles comes to the end, and it comes to the end in the days of, as it was in Jonah's dream, the false prophet, which has two horns on his head, and horns are, in Hebrew, kingdoms, two kingdoms. That would have been the Byzantines and 
Western Europe Rome. And who's in control of the Byzantines right now? Well, the Byzantines were chased out of Asia Minor, and they are now in Ukraine, Russia, etc. Remember, Yonah's vision was a vision. Just like Nebuchadnezzar's vision was a vision. Just like Yosef's vision, uh, 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 Pharaoh's vision, that Yosef had to explain that the cows and the wheat represented the same thing, seven years of drought and destitution. So, the false prophet, the two horns on his head, is a representation of kingdoms. In the last days. And if you bother to read the prophets, like Haggai 2, verses 18 through 22, you will plainly see that they will be destroyed, the kingdoms of the Gentiles will be destroyed, every one by the hand of his brother. And what do we have in Russia today? Ukraine and Russia, brother against brother. It is a portent of things to come, folks. Now, let's go back to Ezekiel. No, before I go back to Ezekiel, right here where it says, uh, this aforesaid Antichrist, as he says, is come when the time of the Roman Empire shall have been fulfilled. All right, let's see what Paul, I've done this over and over again, folks. Let's see what Paul has to say about that. So Romans 11. Reception. Verse 25, For I would not, brethren, Roman church, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. Well, isn't it? Can't you see that Cyril was wise in his own conceit, and he totally deceived and brainwashed the entire Christian mass, every one of them, every single one of them, concerning the Antichrist doctrine. That partial blindness happened to Israel until the hourglass of the Gentiles fills up. Until their hourglass is full. You know, I know it doesn't say hourglass, but it implies that. You know how I know that? Luke 21. That's how I know it. Luke 21. And this happened to Jerusalem, the Jews. They did fall by the edge of the sword, and they were led away captive into all the Gentiles. Ethnos means Gentiles, the heathen world. Until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled, to make complete, come to the end. And so, Cyril says, what happens next? He says the Antichrist comes to take the overthrow of Rome. What does it say here? It says, there will, then there will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars, the signs of 
Yol 2 that I have discussed with you repeatedly over the past few weeks. And upon the earth, distress upon the what? The Gentiles. What caused their distress? You should know by now. With perplexity in the waves and the seas, roaring men's hearts failing for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth, for the powers of the sky will be shaken. And then they shall see the Son of Man, the Antichrist, coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when you, the Israelites, see these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. Now, let's go look in, let's see here. I think Because I don't want to stray too far from the sub. I want to keep that subject right there with Cyril claiming that Yehoshua, the real Messiah, is the Antichrist. And that is why they're all going to come together with the ten toes leading the way. The ten toes of Europe leading the way. To fight against the Moshiach of Israel. That you read about. Um, let's see here. Kings. Revelation 17. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which have take not yet sovereignty. They handed their sovereignty over to the man at the Vatican, but received power as kings for, it says, one hour. A period of time. With the beast. These have one mind and give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is master of master and Melech of Melech, and they that are with him are called chosen and faithful. So those simpletons and the circumcised who believed in him when he comes, because they're looking for him. Yes, the Jews are looking for the Moshiach. When he comes, they will come to him and the Christians because they were deceived by the skilled and the, the, and the wise in this world, brainwashed, will come and fight against him. I proved it to you. Right here, right now, on the spot. So, will this war lead to something greater? Absolutely. This war right now. How do I know? Well, I'm not a, I, I don't have the ability to prophesy like the prophets did, not like the disciples did. I have the words of the prophets right here in front of me, just like you do. 
I showed you that on that day in 1967 on Shavuot, there was 49 more years you had to start counting. Why? Because the call was made by Shlomo Gorin to rebuild Jerusalem as it was in the days of old. I proved that to you. I showed it to you. I said it in Hebrew, and then I said it in English over and over and over again. From the call to rebuild Jerusalem unto Moshiach the Prince. The Moshiach who has been given all power. Just like the Prince in Saudi Arabia. What he says goes. The King of Saudi Arabia gave the Prince in Saudi Arabia, the Crown Prince, all the power. That time expired in 2016. That time expired. I told you this over and over again. It's not hard to count from Shavuot 1967 to Shavuot of 2016. It's 49 years. This is something a simple mind can understand, folks. I explained to you how the full week of Daniel 9 was fulfilled in the destruction of Jerusalem. That three and a half years, uh, taking three and a half years from here and putting it over here, that's nonsense. He specifically said that 62 sevens was allotted from uh, when the street and the wall was built in the days of Nehemiah to Messiah, not the prince, but Messiah being cut off. That is moved out of the way. That one week of the destruction of Jerusalem moved out of the way. There was only seven sevens left. The call to rebuild Jerusalem Heard. Shlomo Gorin, I showed you, I showed it to you, and I'll show it to you again. Again, and again, and again, and again. Come on. Way down here. Here's what he said. What was the day? When did this occur? The Six-Day War. June 7, 1967, on the liberation of the Temple Mount. And you start counting 49 years. Why? Because he said, Lashana Hazat Be'Yerushalayim Habnuya be Yerushalayim ha Atika. Translation, the real translation is rebuild Jerusalem like the Jerusalem of old this year. Starting this year. You start 1967 on the Roman calendar. This is not hard to do, folks. You can count to 49, can't you? You can count seven, seven. You know what seven times seven is, right? Any simpleton knows that, right? Of course. And you land on 49 in the year 2016. But something else had to happen. When they shall say peace and safety. A man was elected who was not supposed to be elected. And he 
and his people came up with the Abraham Accords. Peace between the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Yitzhak. And yet another sign happened just a little over a year ago, just, just months ago, where Arabs and Israelis were lighting Hanukkah candles together. And because they did it on Hanukkah, that's your sign. I've explained it to you. In Haggai 2, verses 18 through 20, Two, let's have a look at it, shall we? I've done this over and over and over again, but I'm not afraid to continue. I'm just going to keep proving it and proving it until the day comes. And you can stand there and be still brainwashed by Cyril if you want to. And why, oh why, that Jehovah chose to give it to the simple and not to the wise so that there are no excuses, none to be had. Oh, oh that's, not, that's not Haggai. Verse 10, in the four and twentieth day of the ninth month. What's the four and, uh, and twentieth day of the ninth month? It is the day before Hanukkah. Proof? Right here. Proof? Right here. In verse 18. Set this day. Remember this day. This is the day. Watch this day. Set this day. Don't forget this day. What day is it? And forward. This day and forward. From the four and twentieth day of the ninth month. Even from the day that the foundation of Jehovah's temple was laid. Every Jew. Every Jew knows what this day is. It's Hanukkah. That's it. The first day. And what does he say here? Why? Why remember that day? Why? Because that's the day that the trigger is pulled. And what happened on that day? Abraham Accords, peace and safety. You could not escape if you were listening to the news. All you were hearing was peace and safety. If you were in Israel. The word of Jehovah came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Say to Zerubbabel, governor of Yehuda." saying, I will shake the sky and the earth and overthrow the thrones of the kingdoms and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the Gentiles, of the Goi. Of Israel? No, the Goi. And I will overthrow their Merkava, their tanks, and those that ride in them, and the Seuss, the warbirds, and their riders shall all come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, says Jehovah of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel means come out, no, begotten in Babylon. So that would be to the last generation of all of those Jews 
and the other tribes of Israel who are living in Babylon, so to speak, come out of Babylon. My servant, the son of Shealtiel, says, Jehovah of hosts, and I will make you as a sign. Now, folks, if I had a degree in anything, according to the words of Yehoshua, we need to thank the Father that he gave these things to the simple and not to the cunning and the wise. If I would have a degree in anything that would disqualify me in everything that I say. Simply because of that one scripture. So I tell you right now, Cyril, the educated, all of his words are disqualified. His Antichrist doctrine is disqualified. I proved that to you today. And that is the reason and the fact that he has deceived. All of Christianity proves and history proves that when they, when these Christians have a common enemy, they will unite and become one and fight against it. You just watch. They will call him the Antichrist and he will in fact be the real Moshiach. What I'm saying is the time is up. It's over. If this becomes a world war, which I'm certain that it will, it's going to trigger um, they're going to be dragged over into Israel, into the Golan Heights. Let's look at Ezekiel. How do I know it's the Golan Heights? I'll show you. Okay. And after many days you shall be visited. In the latter days, you shall come into the land that is, that has returned from the sword and collect abundance of people, has collected an abundance of people upon the mountains of Israel that were continually waste, but has now come out of the Gentiles. And they shall dwell safely, all of them, and you shall ascend and come like a storm. You shall be like a cloud to cover the land, you and all your bands and many people with you. Okay. Oh, that's right. It's in verse 38. I'll, I'll read some of this right here, uh, all the way down here. Then I'll go to verse 39, verse 30, uh, chapter 39, because in chapter 39 is where it talks about Bashan. Thus says Jehovah, it shall also come to pass at the same time, things shall come into your mind, and you shall think an evil thought. And you shall say, I will go to the land of Hamlets. All right, there's your first clue. Uh, the city of Jerusalem is not a land of hamlets. Northern Israel is. I will go then there are rest and, and dwell safely, all of them. Dwelling a wall. Does it say without a wall? It just says a wall. Dwelling a wall. Does it say neither bars? No, it says with bars. Does it say nor gates? It says a door. See? See how they deceived you? See how King James deceived you? Don't be fooled, folks. To do what? To take a spoil and to take a prey. 
just like we saw in this little video. Where is it? I won't be able to find it. This is it. Looting stores in Melitopol. James was right. And to turn your hand upon the desolate places and dwell upon the people that are gathered up out of the Gentiles. So they're going to be gathered in first, it appears to be. I don't, I don't know the exact timing, folks. They're going to come against Israel. But not just Gog Magog. This is all of Christianity I've just showed them to you in many videos, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Sheba and Dedan, that would be of uh, the Arabian Peninsula, and the merchants of Tarshish. With all the young lions thereof, shall say to you, just like they're saying right now, they didn't do anything, not lifting a fin hardly a finger for Ukraine, they won't lift a finger for Israel either. Are you come to take a spoil? Are you gathered to take uh, your company to take a prey, to carry away gold and silver and take away cattle and goods and to take a great spoil? And I believe, I believe, folks, that this is after they have gathered the spoil from the Gentiles. But I don't know. Now, let's go so I do not... And it repeats it again here. It says that he's going to uh, uh, cause their bow and their, uh, and their arrow to fall out of their hands. And he's going to send a fire, the great fire, upon Magog and them that dwell carelessly in the coastlands. That would be <coughs> Rome and the rest of Europe. They shall know Jehovah. All right, now we go here. Verse 17, and you son of man, Yeho Adonai Jehovah says, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves and come and gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, which I sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that you may eat flesh, and drink blood, and you shall eat the flesh of the mighty, and drink the blood blood of princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, of goats, of bullocks, and all them fatlings of Bashan. So they're going to be coming through Bashan. I showed you what Bashan is many times. Mm -hmm. All right, see the map? Right here. This is Israel. This is the Golan Heights. This is Bashan. Any questions? All right. That's where they're going to enter. And this is where they're going to die. You shall eat till you be full and drink blood till you be drunk with my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots with mighty men with all men of war. And this is how he is going to is at this time he's going to have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. You see? And bring them from the people, from the Gentiles, and gather them out of their enemies' lands. So, I suspect, here's why. 
I'm going to give you a time frame scenario that I think. But I, in no wise am I, is it, is it guaranteed? Okay? The Messiah comes. And tomorrow I might have a different opinion. So, please do your own studying. The Messiah comes and gathers, orders the gathering of the children of Israel in Tarshish first. Just like it says in Isaiah 60. And the vast majority of them are in the Western Hemisphere. I mean, North and South America. I'm not saying that there's none in Europe. There's lots, lots in Europe. There are hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions still in Europe left. But the most are in North and South America. They will have to bring them in first. Probably will be some plagues by the two witnesses to make sure that they come in. Not sure. I know the two witnesses are going to be involved. I'm not sure how this great war is going to play out. Really, I'm not. But there go when when they've got the gold and silver back, when they've got all the good uh, the wealth of of the Gentiles back. These people are going to come and try to get it. You see what's happening right now. You know, you know what the deal is. You can see it with your own eyes. It's greed. Looting and pillaging. This is what they do. This is what Christians have done to the Jews for centuries and millennia. And now they're going to do it to each other. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready and have yourself prepared to go to Israel. Let me show you something. They said, where, Master, where? Look. I don't know if this search engine in, uh, is going to pull it up. It never does. Ah, finally. Here we go. This would be verse 37, Luke 17, 37. So he talks about how this thing is going to happen at a moment's notice. Just like in the days of Noah, so shall it be on the days of the Son of Man's return. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given into marriage until that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, and they built. And on the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from the sky and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which is on the housetop, this is a figure of speech here, and his stuff in the house, let him not come to take it away, and he that is in the field. In other words, when you when time, when when the call is made, it's coming, then what you need to do is just drop what you're doing and make your way to the airport or whatever means of transportation that's available to you and get your tail over there. Those of you whose parents and your grandparents were forced to wear this, leave this place at once. Those of you, all of you Jews, leave. So rubber bell is your sign. Okay? You know, you should know by now that this world is going to receive payback for what it has done to you, O oh Jew. So you don't want to stay here and experience it. No. No, you want to leave and go back. 
to the land that your forefathers were promised. Let him not likewise return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So don't think about how you're going to save your life at that time. You just get your butt over there. Even if bullets are flying over your head. I talked to a Filipino girl. And I told her she's going to have, if, 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 if she wants to be a part of this kingdom, she'll probably going to have to go and get on an, uh, an airliner. I'm not getting on one. It's not safe. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall be willing to lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you in that night there shall be two women, two men in one bed. One shall be taken and the other one shall be left. Two women shall be grinding at together. One shall be taken and one left. And two men shall be in the field. And one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered, taken where? Where? And here it is. Where, master? And he said unto them, wherever the carcass is, there will the buzzards be gathered together. Now, there is, so they said where, all right? You see where it says where. Now, if you go to, see, wherever the body, let's, <laughs> a corpse, now. It is written somewhere else, too. That's the reason why I have to... Um, wherever the corpse is, that's where the vultures, birds of prey, vultures, are going to be gathered. So it's obviously talking about a corpse. We can even do one of the other uh, versions. Ah. Uh. All right, Holman Christian Standard Bible says, Where the corpse is, there shall be the vultures gathered. So where are the corpse going to be? Northern Israel. So where is that gathering going to take place? So apparently, so listen care. this is the reason why I think I might have a little bit of a timeline here, folks. There are people already gathered there already, right? Right. You agree and I agree. The white supremacists, like Hal Turner, says they are false Jews. Well, it's because he ascribes to Cyril. You see? So, those of you who are Jews, you can agree with me that there are Jews in Israel right now, living in Israel and currently without fear. Now, the Messiah says, the Moshiach says this. When they said, where is this gathering going to take place? Where the corpses are. Those where the vultures be gathered. And for that, See, he gave a clue. He gave a sign. For those of you who read the scripture, you know what this is. This is Ezekiel 39. We just read it. So there's going to be yet another great gathering in Ezekiel 38, 39. You see? That's my opinion. That's what I suspect. But I don't go and get my opinions on just ideas in my head. I'm trying to, I'm putting scripture together. You see what I, you see what I just did. I'm not trying to deceive anybody. I use the scripture. That's where it's going to be. So. I hope you're ready. You didn't think that it was that, you didn't think that this 
car in every driveway, a chicken in every pot, and an, an iPhone in every hand was going to last forever, did you? Really? Come on, man. Using Joe Biden's favorite term, come on, man. You can't be serious. You did, honestly didn't think that this would last forever, did you? How foolish can people be? Yet, here we are. Within 48 hours, total and complete depravity. I just showed you the human grocery store. Ain't it fresh? 